From WFRV TV Local 5, your local election headquarters. This is Newsmaker Sunday with your host, Tom Zalaski. Good morning and welcome to Newsmaker Sunday. I'm Erin Davison in for Tom Zalaski. Today our election coverage focuses on the race for the United States Senate. Today we talk with Republican candidate Leah Vukmir. She is a member of the Wisconsin Senate representing the 5th District which includes a portion of Milwaukee through Dodge County. She is a nurse, a military mom and raised two children in Wauwatosa. Vukmir defeated Kevin Nicholson at the Republican primary and faces incumbent Democrat Tammy Baldwin in the November election. Leah Vukmir, welcome back to Newsmaker Sunday. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Erin. Happy to be back. So what have you learned since winning the primary? Well, I learned that you got to keep working very hard. You, you can't take your foot off the gas pedal. Uh, it's a continuation of what I did before, and that's meeting people in every corner of this great state. I've put on 86,000 miles on my car, and I will continue to do so between now and November 6th. I think it's really important that you get out, you meet people, listen to them, uh, it's something I'm accustomed to doing to doing as a nurse. Nurses are good listeners, and so I'll continue to do that between now and November 6th. Let's talk about the latest Marquette University Law School poll. It shows you trailing Tammy Baldwin 53 to 42 percent among likely voters. How closely does your campaign pay attention to poll numbers? I keep my focus in on my game plan, and I'm not going to let the polls change anything. These are the same polls that, you know, had me uh, within two points. Um, there was a greater disparity at another point. These are the same polls that had uh, Senator Ron Johnson at the same point where I am right now. Um, same polls that had Hillary Clinton winning. So again, I really try to focus in on getting our message out to the great people of the state of Wisconsin. And it's a positive message of we've accomplished a lot here in Wisconsin. I want to take those common sense reforms to Washington. Having said that, do the numbers change your strategy at all? We keep focused on, uh, on the goal, and, and that is to defeat Senator Tammy Baldwin, who we believe has not represented our state. And I hear it over and over again from people everywhere that uh, Tammy seems more interested in uh, spending time with the special interest groups on the East Coast and the West Coast and shines around during election year. I think it's really important that if you're going to represent the people, that you're here listening to them, talking to them, and finding out the issues that are important. It's something I'm used to doing uh, as a state senator, and I will continue doing that. Uh, if I am the next U.S. Senator for Wisconsin. Some people say the poll numbers are reflect possibly a blue wave and certainly Governor Scott Walker seems concerned about that judging by his tweets. In your view, is it a real thing? I think we have to be concerned about it, but I also know that we have a very unique Republican Party that's very energized and mobilized and we have the ability to put that network to, to work and they're already getting excited and they're going to be working hard between now and November 6th. I've been traveling to field offices around the state. We've been having rallies everywhere, and people know what they need to do. And, and I think you have to remember what we've been through since 2011 when we assumed the mantle of leadership. We've accomplished a lot together, and it's a team. Um, you know, it includes the governor, but the members of the legislature, but the grassroots, those people that do the hard work of making the phone calls. That's where I got started. So I really relate to the grassroots because I was a mom with a cause, concerned about education. and. Here I am now, a, a candidate for the United States Senate. Only in this great country of America can a story like that happen. And so I'm excited to continue that work and to inspire the grassroots to work hard between now and November 6th. And they're, they're getting mobilized. Let's talk about an issue that's in front of U.S. Senators right now, um, the confirmation hearings for Judge Brett Kavanaugh. To quickly recap, Christine Blasey Ford has accused Kavanaugh of attempted sexual assault when two were high school students. Um, should the Senate Judiciary Committee delay the vote to send the nomination to the full Senate? Well, I think there's serious allegations that need to be heard, and that's why I'm glad that uh, Senator Grassley has offered the opportunity for both um, Dr. Ford and for uh, Judge Kavanaugh to discuss the allegations. And I think they even went a step further and said if she does not want to do this publicly in a hearing, which of course you, you know could be a very difficult thing to do, that they would be willing to listen to what she had to say. Uh, in a you know separate uh, venue, um, so I think it's important that that process go through. If she decides not to, um, for whatever reason, then I think that the process should unfold and they should continue with their um, confirmation hearings. I think it's a little disappointing that um, our own senator, Senator Baldwin, 48 hours after President Trump announced Judge Kavanaugh as the nominee, had already decided that she wasn't going to vote for him, and to this date has not even met with him. 
and yet, you know, she's calling for people to meet with um, Dr. Ford, which is important, but she's not even willing to meet with uh, Judge Kavanaugh. That's wrong, and I think people expect their elected officials to do their job. We have a Senate confirmation process in Wisconsin, and I've been a part of that, and I've met with people that are going to be confirmed before the state Senate. I think it's your job. You need to follow through, and you need to do it, even if you don't think you're going to agree with the person. Uh, getting back to the assault allegations, are we as a nation in danger of victim shaming here? Well, I think we have to just be very careful anytime there are allegations like this and we have to give people the ability uh, on both sides to discuss what's happened. And, um, and I think that's what's happening here. We are giving that opportunity to Dr. Ford um, and Judge Kavanaugh so that both uh, individuals have the ability to um, say what actually happened from their perspective. Um, we need to make sure that people have that opportunity. And another subject, how important is President Trump's support of your campaign? Well, I'm excited that the president um, is uh, planning to come to Wisconsin. We haven't nailed out a time yet, but he called me and congratulated me the day after the primary, and we hope that he will come. I think that uh, when I travel around the state, people are excited uh, to hear from him, and they know that uh, he is interested in what's happening in our state. In fact, my phone conversation with him uh, was very much centered around what am I hearing as I'm talking to people? What are the farmers thinking? He was very engaged. It wasn't a conversation where he was doing the talking. He was asking a lot about Wisconsin. And so um, I hope that he does have the opportunity to come because I think he will energize a, a, a large portion of people who are looking at him and what has happened since he's taken office. Uh, our economy is booming and people are seeing those results in their pocketbooks and uh, they're excited about seeing that and they want to see it continue. We've done a good job of, of restoring um, that consumer confidence here in Wisconsin and now the reforms and the tax cuts at the federal level are also doing the same thing and so they're energized and they want to see that continue. All right, we continue our conversation with Leah Vukmi when we come back.